Hello, I'm James Jacobson. And I'm Pamela Lawrence. Welcome to Dog Edition, the first show designed for you to listen to while you walk your dogs. And if you like what you hear on today's Dog Walk, please subscribe. Just click that little button and follow Dog Edition so you never miss an episode. All right, Jim, did you know that when you step out of a shower, you've got about a pound of water on you? That is an awkward (laughs) transition. No, I did not know that, but uh, uh, I guess we're talking about my bathing habits today on Dog Edition. What does this have to do with dogs? Well, you'll find out in a bit from David Hu, Professor of Mechanical Engineering and Biology at Georgia Tech. And also, after I'm done with the shower, (laughs) later in the show, Daily Paws editor Haley Berglund helps us answer that age-old question, why do dogs hump? Is my dog trying to make babies with another dog? Is my dog confused about who he is? But first, I'm sure most people heard the news about Lady Gaga's French bulldogs being dog-napped after her dog walker was attacked and shot. Thankfully, her dogs were returned, and Ryan Fisher, the dog walker, is recovering from that violent attack. But this high-profile dog napping has really brought to light a widespread issue that seems to be getting worse since the pandemic. Tara Bruno, founder of Snort Rescue, Snort stands for Short Nose Only Rescue Team, helps us to understand what's going on here and what you can do to keep your pets safe. In Lady Gaga's situation, her dog walker did nothing wrong. He was just walking the dogs and they were targeted. So if you love dogs as much as we do, pause what you're doing, leash up your pup, and let's take a walk. We've got a lot to talk about on today's episode of Dog Edition. Hey, Pepper, want to go for a walk? So lately, it seems I can't look at social media or turn on the news without hearing another story about a dog being stolen. For the past several months, I've spoken to several heartbroken French bulldog owners. In San Francisco, Sarah Forhouse is searching for Chloe, taken violently in broad daylight. He had a gun and he said, give me your dog. And then he punched me twice. Richmond police say home surveillance cameras kicked on to record this dog napping. Another dog stolen from a Houston pet store. The theft caught on surveillance cameras. The search is on for a brazen pair of thieves caught on camera taking off with two bulldogs dog puppies. This is happening all over the United States, and the dogs all seem to be French bulldogs. Why is that? French bulldogs tend to be one of the top breeds that people want, and what people or thieves see are dollar signs. That's Tara Bruno, founder of Snort Rescue, an all-volunteer nonprofit rescue in the Northeast United States. French bulldogs have ranked in the top five most popular dog breeds for the last few years. This is according to American Kennel Club. But also, Tara says... They're very easy to just pick up and and run away with. Um, And and especially because of COVID, because there's such a high demand for dogs right now, they're even easier to sell and make some money. So it's really sad. Snort Rescue specializes in... I'm going to get this wrong. It's breaky... do you know how to say this? I think it's brachy, brachycephalic. Brachycephalic. Ooh, there we go. Say that five times fast. Brachy means short and cephalic means head. Think Boston Terriers and pugs and French bulldogs and English bulldogs. Aside from being an attractive target for dog thieves, there are a few things to know before bringing one of these dogs into your family. They come with a lot of health issues, and with that comes very high vet bills. You know, the Frenchies are are more prone to back issues, but they're all prone to allergies. These dogs have difficulty breathing, especially in hot weather like we have here in Hawaii. They often need medication and a special diet for their allergies. But still, French bulldog puppies can cost anywhere from $1,500 to $15,000 depending upon the number of puppies in the litter and the color of the fur. Yeah. So when a man in San Francisco tried to sell a pair of French bulldog puppies for $500 each, it should have raised some red flags. Just a few. And indeed, the woman who bought one of the dogs for her daughters did have her doubts. She did some research and found her way to Doug Renneke, whose two French bulldog puppies had been taken from his San Francisco home, Doug Renneke. 
I put the word out and people have just started connecting. She bought this for her um, girls and knew it was not, not right. Tara Bruno says the increase in French bulldog thefts is scary and sad, but not surprising. You're talking on average 20, 25 pounds for these dogs, maybe 30 pounds. It's easy to pick up, you know, one under each arm and just take off. Um, they're also super friendly for the most part. Um, you know, 99% of them are just going to be like, okay, sure, I'll go along with you. Or, you know, if a thief has a little piece of food, forget it, the dog's going with them. So to keep your pets safe, Tara suggests making sure they're microchipped and that the microchip is registered. Also, you're running errands. Don't leave your dog tied outside a store while you go inside. Don't leave the dog unattended in your yard, even if it's a fenced yard and you think that people can't see. You know, some people know what kind of dogs you have and they can plan to steal the dog. Um, same holds true. Don't leave the dog in your car. Definitely spay or neuter your dog because if the, if the dog is not spayed or neutered and someone thinks they can breed the dog, the dog can be sold for so much more money. This rash of dog thefts really is all about the money. The pandemic has created an increased demand for dogs on one end of the spectrum and an increased and desperate need for the money on the other. It's a situation that has put dogs and in some cases their owners at risk like this story from Fox 5 Atlanta. A man was held up at gunpoint at a park on Mason Turner Road. Police confirm his French bulldog was also stolen. And this story from January of the brutal attack of Sarah Vorhaus in San Francisco. He had a gun and he said, give me your dog. And then he punched me twice. Sarah's French bulldog, Chloe, is still missing. There is a $20,000 reward for her return and in the case of Lady Gaga's dogs, the reward was $500,000 that Lady Gaga offered. Well, it's a lot of money. Do you think that these rewards perpetuate the problem? That is a good question. Um, I think if one of I don't want dog nappers no. to come after my Kenga and Roo, um, but they are microchipped. Um, I think that, you know, if something happened, the natural impulse is, whatever it takes to get my yep. my my fur baby back but yeah i think it's sort of one of these horrible things i think you have to look at the systemic answers to the problem uh which you know again it seems to be money so th i think there's some systemic things but i can't tell someone who is subject to having their dog nap that they wouldn't post rewards yeah i would do what i, I could what do too you think? yeah yeah i would do whatever i could also i think to get my <laughs> My dog's back. They're members of the family. How, you know, how could I not? Um, but when I, it's your baby. It's my babies. And when I asked that question of Tara, Tara Bruno, uh, she thought maybe that's, you know, that's a possibility, but also recognizes that what's causing the increase in dog thefts is really a complex problem. And like us, if this happened to her. You know, if that happened to me and my dog was stolen, I would make sure that my reward was substantially greater that somebody might be able to sell my dog for. You know, if it's a French bulldog, maybe a thousand dollar reward might not be enough because it could be sold for a thousand dollars. I'm thinking now I should get the value of my dogs assessed so I know how much of a reward I need to offer. You know, you raise a really good point. In property law, in the laws in the United States, dogs are not considered part of the. What? You know, they're not people, they're, they're property. And so they do have a value on them. And we need to do a story on, on a future episode of Dog Edition about this. But, you know, from a veterinary perspective and liability, they actually look at dogs as property and replacement value. So it's really, really sad. But I think Tara kind of has it right. It's weird. Yeah. Priceless. I would say priceless. How do you put a value on a, on, on a family member? But, oh, okay. Unfor <laughs> unfortunately, they're doing it. But if you are considering an expensive French bulldog for your family, uh, you know, buyer beware. Even better, as Tara Bruno says. Best is to adopt, don't shop. I'm happy Lady Gaga got her dogs back. Thank God that was a happy ending and that the dog walker is going to be okay. And, you know, maybe this whole situation is bringing some light to, to a problem and, and, you know, people will be more vigilant. To find out more about Snort Rescue and how you can support their mission, check out our show notes. 
When we come back, we get a science lesson from David Hu, professor of mechanical engineering and biology at Georgia Tech. Now, what does that have to do with dogs? Stick around. Stay tuned. You're listening to Dog Edition. Hi, it's me again, James Jacobson, and there are three things that you should know about me. One, since 2003, I have been driven by an all-consuming mission. That mission is to help improve the quality of life for dogs and the people who love them. Two, I have founded or helped to co-found several companies that share that mission, including Dog Podcast Network. And three, every day, I give my dogs Everpup, the ultimate daily dog supplement made by Functional Nutriments, which is one of those companies. What is Everpup? Everpup is an extraordinary all-in-one supplement that you sprinkle on your dog's food. It's a polyceutical, which means it contains an incredible blend of lots of different human-grade ingredients. It contains vitamins and minerals and prebiotics and probiotics and enzymes and dietary apoptogens and so much more. What you need to know is that it supports every cell and system in your dog's body. And Everpup is appropriate no matter what type of diet you feed your dog, from kibble to raw food to home cooked. And the rich green powder is easy to add to food. Dogs love the taste. They find it delicious. And you can even try it yourself because Everpup is made with 100% human grade ingredients. It's made here in the USA in an FDA registered and inspected laboratory. And all the ingredients are ethically sourced and triple checked for quality. Seeing is believing, so try Everpup for a month and see what happens with your dog. Everpup is available through select veterinarians and pet shops and Amazon, but here is the best way to try Everpup. Join the Everpup Club and get free shipping to any U.S. address. As a listener to this podcast, you can get your first shipment of Everpup for just $8, including free shipping when you use the discount code DOGEDITION. For all the details, go to everpupclub.com and try your first full jar of Everpup for just $8. That's everpupclub.com. Welcome back to Dog Edition. Jim, when your dogs get wet from rain or, you know, swimming in the ocean or a bath, they shake, right? They totally shake. And it's like really, really quick. (laughs) And messy. Well, David who? And messy. And messy. Well, David Hu, professor of mechanical engineering and biology at Georgia Tech, gave me a science lesson on the wet dog shake. I want to kick off this segment with a little experiment. Are you, are you, can you be my guinea pig, so to speak? <laughs> I will be your guinea pig, but we're remote. So, yes, let's okay, do it. Okay, you ready? All right. Okay. I'm going to ask you to shake your head twice as fast as you can, but it has to be within one second. Shake my head. Try and shake it. Watch out for your headphones. <laughs> oh, my headphones. Don't okay. Hold yeah, your that, headphones that, so they don't fly I'm off. getting a headache. <laughs> How'd you feel? <laughs> a little dizzy. Uh, you know, like my headphones are shaking back and forth. That's, that's tough. <laughs> yeah. Uh, David who? As you know, humans, um, we don't have that much fur anymore, at least most of us. And we don't, uh, can't shake. In fact, if you try to shake your head, uh, you, the best you can get is twice per second, and you will not be able to achieve anything like a dog. You'll get really dizzy and sick. But dogs, on the other hand, are experts at shaking, especially when they're wet. Yeah, the dog shake, um, you know, to us, it kind of seems like maybe annoying or kind of cute when they come in and uh, drench us. Um, but in terms of evolution, it's something that absolutely had to evolve for them to survive. How animals have adapted and evolved their mechanics can lead to discoveries and inventions that will improve the lives of us humans. So David and a team of researchers set out to study the wet dog shake. To understand how dogs are so effective at shaking off water, um, we did this, what we call a comparative approach. We go to the Atlanta Zoo and we measured... Um, around 33 different animals, um, not just dogs, but, um, you know, rats, mice, guinea, guinea pigs, pigs, tigers, lions, pandas, all the way up uh, to understand all these animals that have fur, how do they, how do they um, get dry? One thing David Hu and his research team discovered is that all of these animals shake in the same way. They basically stand on these four legs and they sh- rotate their bodies back and forth. They can shake off the water um, in fractions of a second. 
Using a high-speed camera to capture the shake, they determined that dogs can get rid of 70% of the water trapped in their fur in four seconds. Woof. It's fast. It's, it's an amazing number. Losing 70% of your water in four seconds is really good. You know, if you put your laundry uh, in the washing machine and then uh, you come out four seconds later, it's pretty much the same. To lose a comparable amount of water as dogs, you'd have to spin that laundry dry for 30 to 40 minutes. It takes a lot of force for dogs to achieve this. Think of it this way. The Earth has a pretty high gravity, and if you were to get in a car crash, for example, the number of Gs or the acceleration that you'd feel due to the force of gravity is about four to eight times Earth's gravity, the G-force. Now, when a dog is shaking, it's 20 to 50 times Earth's gravity. It's a huge, huge amount of force. Um, and it could potentially damage the animals, actually, if they're not really careful. So we all noticed that they're closing their eyes shut really tightly um, because uh, it's actually a substantial of forces on their soft body parts. Mm. My dogs have buggy eyes, so no, that concerns me. And I never knew that. They, I mean, I know that they close their eyes. I didn't know that all dogs do. That's actually so cool. But to put this in perspective, the human limit for the amount of acceleration you can get is around 12 to 15 times Earth's gravity. Once you get above that, then uh, your eyes actually start detaching from your retinas. Um, so it's actually kind of a mystery how the dogs actually don't hurt themselves when they're shaking, shaking that quickly. I mean, they do seem a little bit dizzy sometimes if they've shaken that fast. I'm sure their brains are just rattling around in there. And to achieve the same amount of force as the big dogs, small dogs, like ours, have to shake a lot faster. Imagine you're on a merry-go-round. If you're in the center of the merry-go-round, you don't really feel that much force. But as you walk towards the outside, farther and farther away from the center, you get lots and lots more force. And these animals are the same way. If you're an animal and you're trying to shake off, your small dogs are really going to be working the hardest. Um, They're really going to be having to shake at higher frequencies. The bigger animals like bears and lions, they can just sort of sloppily just shake a little bit and the water's just going to just throw, throw itself off. Dogs do the wet dog shake as a survival technique. Think about it. You step out of the shower with one pound of water on your body, you towel off, and maybe you dry your hair. But what if you just drip dried? Water has a, a really large, what's called a heat of vaporization. That means it takes, if you want to actually boil that water off or evaporate it off, it takes a huge amount of energy. I mean, you just think about if you go home um, and you have wet clothes and you don't take off those clothes and you just let, let the clothes try to evaporate dry. Now imagine your dog's fur is those wet clothes. Let's do the math. For a wet 60 pound dog with one pound of water in its fur. If, um, you calculated the dog would actually have to take a third of its daily calories, so an entire meal of just energy just to heat off that water if we were to just heat it out, heat it off um, without any kind of manual means. No wonder they shake. Dogs are really good at getting dry. And you know, any time that an animal is really good at something, there's an idea there that can be used. If you have a fancy camera, one of these digital cameras, if you turn it on, you might see this uh, sign that says, uh, sensor cleaning. And what that's doing, it's basically doing a miniature wet dog shake inside your camera. Uh, just spinning, uh, rotating quickly enough that any small particles get thrown off. Um, and they're thinking about exploring these kind of mechanisms for other other kinds of devices. That is so cool because, yeah, every time I turn on my DSLR, it does that. I had no idea I had my dog to thank for that. But notice, David said miniature wet dog shake. Oh yeah, 50 Gs on a camera would be um, a little bit too much. The dogs can really take a beating. Um, I think if they ever had any soft, soft robots, maybe they could sustain that. But, you know, a lot of the forces that they, these animals experience, we really can't reproduce in our, in our daily products. So I asked David about hairless animals. I know there are some hairless breeds of dogs and, and cats, you know, do they still have to do the wet dog shake? One of them we tested was a hairless guinea pig, which we doused with water. Uh, and we expected the shake, but it just stood there shivering with a kind of an angry look at his face. The poor guinea pig um, probably doesn't like baths very much. So sad. 
so sad. The poor, poor guinea pigs. <laughs> but no guinea pigs were killed in the making of that and then in that research, I'm sure. Right. Just got a, they got a wet a little bit. And thank you for being the guinea pig with the uh, experiment at the top of the segment. <laughs> Pleasure. <laughs> David Hu's book, How to Walk on Water and Climb Up Walls, Animal Movement and the Robots of the Future, has his wet dog shake research and all sorts of other examples of how scientists have studied animal movement. And he's writing a new book due out in the next year or so. So make sure to check out the show notes for information on that. Haley Berglund knows a thing or two about dogs. She's worked with, trained, and studied animals of all kinds for the past decade. She also works for a digital publication dedicated to pets. For Daily Paws, um, I serve as I'm the editor of Pet Health and Behavior. So any type of content we have that um, really comes down to training, psychology, enrichment. So living well and understanding your pet well um, is definitely something I'll have an opinion on. <laughs> Daily Paws has a popular column called What the Fluff, which uh, is easily the funnest thing to say, but also it's gotten me in trouble a couple of times. They get questions from anxious or curious dog owners about all sorts of topics. The weird but really valid uh, questions that I get asked by pet owners. Like this one. Can dogs see color? Mm, yes. So this one is really fun. Um, and the answer is yes. Traditionally, I think people have the idea that dogs are totally colorblind. And um, that's not technically true. Humans, there's many uh, humans that have issues with red and green um, and determining the differences between those. And that would be red, green, colorblindness. Dog's vision kind of looks like that. Um, but that doesn't mean that their vision is totally devoid of all color. Or what are dog zoomies? When we're talking about zoomies, we're really talking about what appears to be uh, erratic activity that kind of happens out of nowhere. Because all of a sudden, your dog gets a hair up there, you know what, and they decide to run around in crazy circles. Sometimes they're barking. Sometimes they end up chasing their own tail. And why does that happen? It's really, um, a lot of times it's anticipatory in nature. It's that oh, something exciting is going to happen. Or it's that relief moment of, ooh, that wasn't great, but now I'm free from it. I'm fine. I'm alive. I feel good. And of course, a question that has stumped and embarrassed dog owners for a very, very long time. You know, it's funny. Uh, I laugh because... It's probably like one of the number one questions I get asked. <laughs> Everybody wants to ask it, uh, but you know, whether or not they're comfortable with it. I'm comfortable. And I bet you want to know the answer too. Why do dogs hump? Any dog can hump. Uh, the, the sex, the age, um, it doesn't really matter. You know, you might find that in your lifetime with your dog, you may never notice it, right? And then there's always that real special guy, that little thing that came from the shelter that's had just a rough life, and it's his go-to behavior, right? He humps everything. Haley points out that context is key. Are you at a crowded dog park where your dog might feel stressed or overly excited to play? No, Doyle. <laughs> You know, there can be dogs that hump to reduce stress. And puppies will sometimes hump. When your puppy was outside, you know, they peed, they felt really good. It was really good relief. Now they want to play. They don't know how to engage that with you. Those hormones are just going nuts. There's so much adrenaline and excitement happening. And boom, they just start humping because their little brains, that was that was their response. Or maybe your dog just wants to play. Humping serves a function during play. Whenever we talk about any behavior, we always consider what is the function before we actually just give it a broad um, blanket label, right? So it could be play. People often ask, is humping a sign of aggression? Is this inappropriate play? You know, there's some contexts where that could lead 
to bouts of aggression or, um, you know, probably more likely reactivity. You know, if you've got two dogs that are uncomfortable already, what's what's happening? And then you add that. Uh, basically, humping in that scenario is not considered appropriate play, right? You know, if the other dog gets upset, then it wasn't the type of behavior they wanted to engage in. And of course, many dog owners experience embarrassment when their dogs engage in this behavior. But remember, dog behaviors are dog behaviors. No matter how you personally feel about them, the majority of them are quite natural, and humping happens to be a very natural dog behavior in dog world it's not you know if it was a human we'd be having a different conversation here (laughs) indeed we would well thank you for bringing dog edition along with you on your walk we will be back with another episode but chances are that you and your dog will be taking a walk between now and then and we have something for you to listen to. If you're interested in hearing more from some of our guests, please check out DPN's sister show, The Long Leash. You got to check out the episode that we just dropped. It's a conversation with Paul Owens, who is uh, the original dog whisperer. We had him on last week's show. It's a really interesting conversation. We've received actually a a substantial amount of mail uh, about it because people have actually started implementing some of the techniques that he's been advocating for years and seeing some amazing results. I was delighted to get that. So make sure you check out the, The Long Leash with Paul Owens. We'll put a link in the show notes. And subscribe to Dog Edition so you can take us along on your dog walk next week. On next week's episode, you'll hear from Martha Teichner. She is the Emmy Award-winning CBS News correspondent. She's been there since the 1970s. She currently uh, works at CBS Sunday Mornings. She has a new book out. Actually, it's her first book, and it's not about journalism. It's really about dogs and love affairs. It's called When Harry Met Minnie, and it is a love story of loss, of being in the right place at the right time, a love affair for New York, and all the mysterious ways that fate has of bringing us together. It's an extraordinary book and an extraordinary conversation that is on the next episode of Dog Edition. And Dog Edition contributor Saskia Edwards brings us the story of Gobi, a scruffy, homeless little dog who earned her name after following ultramarathoner Dion Leonard on an extreme test of endurance in the Gobi Desert. A bond was created and a promise was made. Dion wanted to rescue the stranded little dog and take her home to Scotland. That's when the true test of endurance began. Dog Podcast Network is for dog lovers by dog lovers, and that means that we want to hear from you. You can check the show notes for links and information on how to reach us, including our old school recorded listener line where you can call in to share your dog stories with us. Call 866-TALK-DOG, 866-TALK-DOG. You can also let us know what you're thinking by going to our website, dogedition.com, and in the bottom right there's a little blue microphone leave us a voice message and it could appear on a future episode we're also looking for correspondence as we grow this podcast and dog podcast network and so if you are a content producer who loves dogs and that could be a journalist a podcaster a audio engineer please check out our 101 dog stories contest worth over fifteen thousand dollars in prize money you can learn all about that on our website at dogpodcastnetwork.com. And be sure to join our pack. Subscribe to Dog Edition in your favorite podcast app and tell a friend about the show. I'm Pamela Lawrence, and I might just see you at the dog park. And I'm James Jacobson. I want to thank you for listening today. On behalf of all of us here at Dog Podcast Network, we wish you and your dog a warm aloha. Aloha.